One other thing, actually a couple more things. Tell me when I got to quit. Okay. You are victims of something else that I want to share with you. You are victims of a tremendous amount of very fast communication that's inaccurate. Nobody has time to digest text messages, tweets, YouTube, and all the rest of that crap. It's fun, but not real. I'm going to ask you a question. Why did Thomas Jefferson, as Secretary of State, implore Congress in the United States to appropriate $3 million, or maybe it was two, I've forgotten, to create a military force for our Navy ships? They became the Marine Corps. Why? Who knows? Are there any history majors in here? Put your hand up. Okay, we'll pick on you. You got too much hair anyway. Kick ass. <laughs> yeah, okay. What was the ship that they took to push him over the edge? USS George Washington. And they took the ship and reflagged it and sent it to the Sultan of Turkey as a gift from Tripoli. They said if the sailors on board the ship and the officers would renounce their religion, they would put them to death at hard work. If not, they'd cut their heads off, stick them on a pike, and roast them on town square. We're still fighting those issues today. They're manifested differently. We better have accurate information so we don't do things like go to war with Iraq because somebody tells us we got chemical weapons someplace. We've got to have facts. We've got to know the truth. And you folks are getting way too much information from the wrong sources. When I was a kid growing up, my school teachers told me to read six newspapers a day. Anybody know what a newspaper is in here? <laughs> six newspapers a day. Don't believe any of them. Take the data, process it, and make your own conclusions. Big, 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 big point, gang. Don't be a victim of high-speed, inaccurate communication. All right, last thing. Political unrest will continue because of poverty, economics, lack of information, lack of education. There's a business in there for you somewhere. Where is the young man that told me that he is going to China because he's starting a new business where he's going to help international students get access to the United States educational system. Stand up. You're my hero. When you're ready, I want to invest in your company. But I'm going to want a lot of it. <laughs> All right. How many of you have business cards? OK, if you don't have a business card, get one, even if you're just now a sophomore in college. And it should say, my name is Ed, I am godlike, and this is where you can find me. <laughs> and then put your university on the back and use a small g, not a large g, OK? Get a business card. Trade it with everybody you meet. Say, hi, my name is Fred. This is who I am. Can I have one of your business cards? Study the thing, because that's what people do internationally, and record it. Scan it into your computer. I don't care what you do with it. Make a little note on where you met the person, what they were doing, and why. Because one of these days, that's going to be your contact list for the future. When you need insurance, when you needed financial advice, when you need something, it's the first place you're going to go. Back in my day, we called that a Rolodex. Those cards will become your golden Rolodex. And you can edit them every year, add to them, and keep building them. Do it alphabetically, do it by industry, do it by location. Next thing. Start a journal. Write in the journal every day about your day's activities, your goals, your wishes, your desires, and what you want to do. And write in it every day. Review it every day. Because if you don't understand your own history, you're going to keep repeating the same mistakes over and over and over again. Oh, by the way, one of these days you're going to give speeches like I do. I get 20 grand when I give a speech. How much you get when you give a speech? 
Me? Yeah. Uh, I'm rich in here. Oh. <laughs> Good for you. I don't do it to get rich. I do it to get even. Uh, <laughs> Start a journal, seriously, because it's going to be the basis of your book one of these days. And you're going to be standing before an audience like this one of these days, and you're going to want to talk about what made you successful and how you can help others to become successful. And a journal will help you write that book. And believe me, people are going to want to know about you folks. Okay, last thing I'm going to tell you, and then we're going to do questions and answers. I want you to buy a book called Cowboy Ethics by James P. Owen. You know, it's not a comic book or a Western. Jim Owen spent his entire career, over 35 years, as an investment manager, pa founder and principal partner of Austin Capital Management. The book is a real quick read about the cowboy legacy. In that book, he describes the values of the romanticized cowboy, the can-do spirit, the authenticity, courage, humility, strength of character, chivalry, chivalry, and responsibility, and other stuff. That book spends a lot of time talking about ethics. And I want to just share one or two things with you about ethics. If you give your word to somebody, you live up to your word, whether it's beneficial to you or not. Because the only thing that you have that once lost can never be regained is your integrity. Sell it for a penny, it's gone forever. Tell somebody a lie, it's gone forever. Your integrity is the only thing you'll carry to your grave. Will it be bright gold and polished, or will it be dull and tarnished? That book will help you figure some of those things out. When you um, write your mission statement, don't forget, please don't forget to put Behaviors, beliefs, and value. What do you believe in? How are you going to behave? And what are your values? I noticed one of your seminars out here had to do with respecting women. I can't remember the title exactly. Help me. Barbara, you saw that thing with me. Sexual violence or something like that? It's a big problem in this country. We have diminished people so terribly men and women, classes of people, and cultures because of the inane comedy that can be found anywhere. You know what the number one source of values is in America today? The number one source of values, and I don't want this for you, the number one source of values, parents, church, schools, where is it? Where? Peers? No, music we listen to. The number one, number one source of values communicated to people today is in the music they listen to. Okay, enjoy your life. There's problems ahead. You're going to have difficulty, but you're surrounded by a group of brothers that are there to support you. You got an international organization that will lift you up. You got brothers that are with you that will lift you up. Take advantage of that. It's the perfect good old boy network but sometimes ain't too smart, but most of the time it is. You guys have got a great future ahead of you. I wish I was you, by the way, because with my attitude and your youth, we could really kick ass. <laughs>